Hello, in this video I have something truly exciting to show you and that is the file picker in Blazor. That's right, in Blazor. Now it has been recently implemented in it and before it was available I always thought this was the biggest downfall of Blazor, the biggest downside rather of Blazor. This is truly useful, creating a proper file stream, C sharp, a stream uh, and, and picking it from the browser. It's, it's a great thing. This file picker, and mind you, this is the native Blazor file picker. It's not some third party library which will break after a week or two with the next update. Uh, it's all perfect and it seems to be perfectly working. Okay, so what we have here just a little pick button. Okay, mind you, the actual file picker is a component really and that component uh, basically renders the input element and that thing is ugly and you can't really do any design on it so i've implemented a way uh, with a button the same way you would really do any other file picker when using javascript okay so we have pick button uh, once clicked uh, it selects a file and then it displays this file size. Very simple. Nothing fancy here, but let's take a look at the code. There are some uh, more tricky parts to, to the code itself. Okay. First of all, we have everything in the index.razor right here. We have paragraph, we have uh, one button. So this is the button that you actually see. Okay. And then we have input file. Okay. You see right here, input file. Now, input file is what you use to actually pick these files. It's the file picker in Blazor. Input, file, element, tag, uh, component, uh, whichever word you prefer. Okay, this is what we use. Okay, this is what we use. Now, the way it gets initiated is, is it's quite exciting and interesting and difficult to find, actually. You won't find these official tutorials like that. You'll just see just the basic use of this whole thing. So first of all, we have this one set to multiple. You don't have to do that. But we also have this set to hidden. Obviously, if you're not going to display it, you want it hidden and you do it like that. Put it in hidden and it's hidden. It's there somewhere, but you don't really see it. You don't see it at all. But you see this beautiful button, which isn't beautiful, but you can actually add some style to it. Unlike uh, uh, the file picker, the input. Okay, so we have pick button and then input file has an ID. Okay, it has an ID. File picker we call it and then we use a little bit of JavaScript in here on click document get element by ID and click. So once this button is clicked, it doesn't do anything on its own, but it, it clicks input file. Okay, it clicks input file and then the user can choose a file okay the way we access the file is using the on change event okay on change on change we use it's all implemented it's using on input file change we can see that right here okay like that private async task output file change just like any custom event you would implement in your component this is of course a, a native uh, event right we have input file change event arguments these are very useful okay this is really what you uh, what you are after with this implementation you have input file change event arguments okay so the way it works you can access this file now if you have multiple files let's look at that first okay we have four each you need four each and then you get multiple files you use from the arguments okay from your arguments you use method get multiple files then you need to provide count okay so this is the maximum count if we look at this you see we have maximum file count and by default it will be 10. the best thing to do if you do not want to limit it, and I presume you do not, sometimes it is quite useful, sometimes it isn't. But if you do not want to limit it, you simply have to do file count, again, from the E, from the arguments, event arguments, you do file count and it will get all the files that are available. And that's it, okay? 
Now in the file itself you have uh, a bit of data, you have the size, uh, then you have the content type uh, and, and not too much stuff but there is just enough to get by. Okay, so we have content type. Now in this little example we have an if statement and if the content type is image, PNG specifically in this case, then we can actually get an image. Okay, it gets an image. Okay. So this one gets uh, uh, gets an image and it's sort of a not really useful thing, but you can add uh, maximum width and height for the image. So you can sort of resize your images. So you use request image file for requesting or for getting image files. Okay. Other than that, if you want just a normal file, or if you want to use it normally as a stream, use file open stream read and then file size okay you need to you have to in fact provide file size okay you have to otherwise it will be default and the default one is as you can see max allowed size 512000 which is extremely tiny. It's pretty much useless at that point. There are some files that might be useful, of course, but uh, if you want to have any decent file, even a decent image file, it will be too small. Therefore, it's best to just provide file size and that's it. Okay. And finally, in this example, we just get the file size. Uh, so a few things important to remember is uh, the file count right here. You can either do them all or limit them as you wish. And by default, it will be uh, 10, which you can see right here. Maximum file count 10 by default. Okay. You can also access content type from the file, uh, which may or may not be useful. You can do that sort of filtering in the front end, but it's probably best to just do that in the back end as well, or both or something like that. Okay, and then you can request image file, which is not perhaps uh, extremely useful in this case. Uh, it's sort of, but not really uh, something they added and let us say that, but uh, the real thing here, the real thing we are after here is this open stream file. But do remember to set this size. If it will be too big, it will throw an exception, it will fail, that's it. Also, if you only have one file, you do not need to use the for each loop. You can simply access file from the E, okay, from the E, from the arguments. And that's it. Now, do take a look at uh, my courses. Uh, first of all, Blazor course, so you will learn Blazor. And if you don't know Blazor, you'll probably find something that will improve your Blazor skills. Uh, it goes from basics of Blazor to something a bit more advanced, such as web sockets and Blazor, accessing APIs, uh, and several other different things. Now, with that said, do subscribe to this channel and have a nice day.